In May 2020, Muddy Waters published a report on GSX Takedu, claiming that they have inflated revenues through bots for an online education agency. Their principal operation is teaching students through live courses, but tutors and teachers have been using bots to participate in these online courses and thereby inflating revenue. To examine the validity of this allegation, we must look at the motivation, the methodology, and the evidence. Education is one of Chinese parents' absolute top priorities, and their willingness to pay for education is unparalleled. However, the monetization of education platforms has come to the point that reminds me of the hate of the shared bicycles, when massive amounts of bicycles are pushed out the streets with investors' money. The bar of entry is even lower for education industry. Nowadays, a brick and mortar rented space is not even necessary. Education agencies can simply outsource all the operation to teachers and tutors. In their respective home offices, and profit off the tuition fees. But the low bar of entry also means fierce competition, and we suspect that GSX is struggling to meet the growth projections it made to investors. According to Muddy Waters, Chairman Chen of GSX has pledged over three hundred eighteen million dollars worth of. Stock. This is common for business owners aspiring for a major lifestyle change. But from Chen's perspective, it is his top priority to avoid a margin call, so that he could maintain his control of the company and his lifestyle choices, but not beating the market expectation by phones. In 2019, GSX reported a revenue growth over 400% year on year. And if this is indeed fabricated, it attracts unnecessary attention and would impose unnecessary pressure on future years' financial reports. However, overall, the management is still very incentivized to push up the stock price and reduce their holdings while it's afloat. Muddy Waters estimated that around 73% of total students are bots. And this number roughly fits the revenue growth. However, several research methods used by Muddy Waters remain questionable for us. First of all, the primary logic Muddy Waters used to identify bots is to check whether a user joined the class at the same time, precise to the second, on the same day, at least two weeks. An analogy was made between this long gone time and a flight touching down at the same time at the exact second. However, if one examines this more closely from a probabilistic point of view, it is not difficult to realize that landing on the exact second is almost inevitable. Recall when you were in school. Are there any classmates who share the same birthday? Chances are there are, even though there are 365 different days in a year, and only a couple of dozens of students in the class. Now, let's think about log on time. Suppose all students join the class with a 10 minutes time window, following a uniform distribution. This is a very conservative estimate. The real world resembles. The normal distribution board. Let's look at a simplified case. Now the chances of you joining on the same second for 26 weeks, at least two times, is one minus factorial of 600 divided by 600 to the power of 22 multiplied by the factorial of 600 minus 26. Which is around 42 percent. This probability doesn't look that small anymore, right? And therefore, I believe that the research methodology used is quite questionable. Moreover, 
Most strategies money waters use to hunt bots are based on its running time. But as a tech-centric company that literally has tech in its name, how hard could it be to develop a bot that has randomized running time? Well, for old companies out there looking to employ bots to boost revenue, here's a tip for you. Now that I've talked about the flaws, I have to say some evidence put forward are very valid, and they have led me to believe that GSX indeed engaged in financial fraud. The GSX IP drawers, who have IP address identical to existing teachers or students, account for around 28% of total users. Also, burst drawers who flock into the classroom at the same time. So even if we rule out actual people who join class at a precise same time purely by chance, we're left with a solid good amount of bots here. Where does Twitch money come from? Muddy Waters presented a story that is almost identical to Luckin Coffee. They believe that GSX has embezzled marketing budget for revenue inflation purpose. For example, they pay an advertising company a commission, and the rest of the marketing fees flow from the advertiser back to GSX. Muddy Waters published a chat history with former managers in GSX, corroborating their theory. I have also personally contacted teachers and got similar response. They believe that bots are systematically employed to make education institutions look good. I suspect that GSX is not the first company to inflate income, and it's definitely not the last. In an industry where fraud and lies are normalized, where crime is normalized, being honest with our numbers is almost destructive. But in the long run, this creates a toxic or environment. Business. To shake up this reality, auditors need to proactively rein in the fraudulent activities and conduct more detailed analysis on business activities. More importantly, regulators need to impose stricter restrictions on fraud and impose more stringent penalties on crimes. The bot farm also highlighted an issue of revenue identity theft in China. Unlike Luckin, GSX collected its revenue mostly through online channels that is backed by real ID numbers and real mobile numbers. This implies that the bots are stealing the identity of people who are completely unaware of the situation. There are many reports on agencies offering money to random people in exchange of. Personal information needed for mo- mobile payment accounts. It is imperative to cut the supply chain of such businesses, both with better detection and policing, and better public education. The notion of studying elementary math with bots is chilling, and the moral corruptness and avant-garde technicality combines to create a sense of cyberpunk. That is re- that is reserved for our digital native next generation. Life is already hard for children who live in an era of hyper competitiveness and shrinking intergeneration mobility. Kids are smarter than you give them credit for. What if they found out about a bot? Nobody knows how studying with bots knowingly would affect children's psychology, and I hope we don't have to find out.